Hello, hello, you amazing virtual assistant, you. <laughs> okay, so maybe you don't call yourself a virtual assistant yet because you haven't landed that first awesome client. But no worries, boss babe. <laughs> In today's episode, I'm going to be taking you through the five simple strategies that fast-tracked my success when I was just getting started as a virtual assistant. Get that matcha latte ready and maybe grab a notebook and pen. I'm going to be sharing all of my best secrets today. You're listening to the Support Squad Podcast, where virtual assistants come together to share their best business tools and tips. Virtual assistant for life coaches Sharon Nissen created the Support Squad with a firm belief in community over competition. Whether you're a new virtual assistant looking for advice on how to get started or an established virtual assistant looking to expand your skills and invite even more abundance into your career, you're in the right place. Working from home doesn't have to be lonely. We're in this together. Now, here she is, the host of the Support Squad podcast, Sharon Nissen. Hey, hey, hey. (laughs) I'm so grateful to be here with all of you today. This is the second episode of the Support Squad podcast, and I have to say I was blown away by how many of you tuned in and shared your feedback with me last week. And if you have just a minute after today's podcast is over, I would love if you leave me a sweet review. It makes a huge difference for me, and I love hearing from you. Okay, so now for today's episode. Five simple strategies that fast tracked my success as a virtual assistant. Now, I'm not claiming that this is a foolproof plan, but I will say that I believe that by employing these strategies right away as a VA, I never had to struggle to find clients. Within just a month of getting started, I had more clients than I could ask for. So, without further ado, here are those strategies. Okay, number one. Upwork. Okay, I'm aware that this one might be a little bit controversial. Freelancing sites like Upwork definitely have their downsides. A lot of clients tend to go for the lowest bidder and the fees are atrocious, but Upwork allowed me to really gain momentum when I was first getting started. And here are a few things I loved about Upwork. First of all, there were countless clients and jobs on the site. Like seriously, you refresh every minute and there's like 100 new jobs, which is exciting. And many of the jobs required very little experience. So at first, I did have to take some lower paying jobs, but those jobs allowed me to build my portfolio and most importantly, my confidence so I could go after my ideal clients. I'll be sharing tips about how I landed those Upwork gigs in the rest of the episode. Here's one. So number two, strategy number two, defining a niche. I think in the last episode, I pronounced it niche, and some people say niche. I'm just going to go back and forth. Niche, 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 niche. (laughs) Okay, so defining a niche. This was a big one for me. When I first started as a virtual assistant, I was marking myself as a VA that could do anything for anyone, no matter what industry it was, no matter what they did, no matter if they wanted emails, graphic design, whatever it was, I just wanted clients. (laughs) I just wanted clients. And I know that like a lot of virtual assistants feel that way when they're first getting started. And while it might seem like a smart idea to cast a wide net when you're first getting started, I found that defining my niche made me a thousand times more desirable to clients. So this is how it happened for me. I landed a gig as the customer service and marketing VA for an amazing life coach. I still work with her. Um, And working with her, I realized that my skills, my interests, and my demeanor were perfect to play a supporting role for women life coaches. So from then on, I dropped the I'll do anything for anyone (laughs) uh, shtick, and I marketed myself only as a virtual assistant for life coaches. And I was nervous at first. I thought, If I say that I'm only a virtual assistant for life coaches, I'm cutting myself off from so many jobs. But I just found that the opposite was true. 
As soon as I started marketing myself that way, the clients came rolling in. They wanted someone who understood their industry, who knew all of the best practices, and who could really bring a level of expertise to their business. I mean, why would they hire a general, all-purpose VA when they could have me, the best virtual assistant for life coaches ever? Okay, so I, I may sound like I'm pretty being pretty uh, egotistical right now, but seriously, if you market this yourself this way with a niche, you will be so desirable to your ideal client. All right, strategy number three, offering trial tasks. Let me explain what I mean by this. When I f- was first getting started as a virtual assistant and didn't have any references or much of a portfolio to speak of, I showed my clients that I was capable of the job by offering to complete trial tasks for them. I would ask them to send me an example of a task that they would have me c- complete regularly for them, and then I would just do it. And this showed them that not only was I capable of doing the work, but that I was capable of doing it exactly the way they needed it done. Because sure, we can talk about our skills and our abilities all day long, but how powerful is it to actually demonstrate those skills in a tangible way? I found that it was super powerful, <laughs> and every client that I offered this to, I, they ended up hiring me, and um, we, knew it was, we both knew it was a great fit because I'd already done a little bit of a trial for them. All right, strategy number four, showing my personality. This is a big one, girls. I see so many of my virtual assistant babes hiding behind their beautiful logos, their gorgeous graphics, and their perfectly designed Instagram feeds. But here's the problem with that. Your client wants to see you. They want to know your personality. They want to see what you're all about. Now, don't go crazy. (laughs) Don't start sharing every detail of your life on Instagram. We don't need to see your dirty dishes. We don't need to see you doing tequila shots in the club (laughs) or whatever it is. But also, don't be afraid to go on video every now and then and share what you're working on or share a picture of yourself with your family. Um, Talk about your why, why you got into the business. These are things that will connect. And in this world of online marketing, a little authenticity and personal personality will go a long way. And trust me, I know how scary it can be to go on video or share yourself on social media that way, especially to clients. It can feel really um, vulnerable, but you just have to do it, girl. (laughs) I believe in you. In fact, I challenge you, as soon as this podcast is over, to go on Instagram, share a video of yourself and your Instagram story, and make sure to tag me at the .support.squad so that I can see you and celebrate you. Because, yeah, we have to get our faces out there. We we play a supporting role, but they want to know who we are. All right, strategy number five. I created a portfolio while I was working on my own marketing. So when you're just getting started as a virtual assistant, you probably don't have a large portfolio of work to share with potential clients. This can really stand in your way. Even at the very beginning of your career as a VA, you should have samples of your own work. And a great way to build your portfolio and work on marketing your growing business is to create graphics, blogs, logos, so on, websites, I mean, you name it, for your own business. And the more writing and designing and organizing you do for yourself, the more confident you'll feel and the more work you'll have to show to your future clients. Cool. So those were my five tips. (laughs) Those were my five strategies that really, really helped me grow my business as I was first getting started. Um, And I'm sure you have some amazing tips as well. Uh, Make sure to connect with me on Instagram at at the.support.squad to share your own business building tips. Because remember, ladies, success is better together and community is always going to be greater than competition. 
the more we can help each other out, the more successful we'll all be. And that's like my entire motto. It's the reason behind the support squad. I believe that as virtual assistants, we have so much we can offer each other. There's enough to go around. So until next time, have an awesome day, boss babes. Bye.